What is the proper orientation uh, of the original Radio Master Boxer TX antenna? It doesn't matter if it's oriented horizontally or vertical. And it's a good idea to replace the stock antenna with the Moxon antenna. Uh, the, the stock antenna is an excellent antenna. There is no reason to replace it. You should get more range than you could possibly need under almost all circumstances uh, out of that stock antenna. As far as horizontal versus vertical goes, the answer to that is that for long-range flying, it's a good idea to have the antenna on the radio match the orientation of the antenna on the drone. So if the drone is vertical, like you've got an airplane wing with an antenna sticking vertically out of it, then you would want it vertical. If it's horizontal, like it's out back the back of a drone, and it's, ver it's horizontal, you would want it horizontal. The reality is that, especially for drones, where the drone is often tilting and rolling and flipping and upside down, the orientation often doesn't match anyway. So, and the, a lot of people are really not flying long enough distance that matching the orientation, it makes a noticeable difference in their range. They're not really at the edge of range anyway. The Moxon antenna is a little bit higher gain. So it's going to have a little bit more focused pattern sort of out front of you. The idea of the, of the stock antenna is it has a circular pattern. So you could basically fly all around yourself and have basically equal range in all directions. With the Moxon antenna, it's a little bit more focused out in front of you. The idea is that you'll be facing the drone. And if that assumption holds, then the Moxon antenna will give you a little better range. Although, again, many people are not really going to hit the edge of their Express LRS range anyway. So the Moxon antenna is bigger, it's a little bulkier, and it's a little bit more of a hassle. So you may as well just stick with the stock antenna. I will show you. Can I show you? Can I? How proud I am. Look what I did the other day. Oh, this is my Radio Master Boxer Crush. And um, I love my boxer crush, but I'm not actually a gigantic fan of the stock antenna. Uh, it, it doesn't fold well. It doesn't fit in my backpack well. I found a 3D print that lets you mod the Radio Master Pocket antenna. Oh, as Unreality says, you mod the Radio Master Pocket antenna onto it, and now <laughs> you have a nice folding antenna. Ooh, that's hot. That's hot, boys. This is the hot pink, not the cherry red. It's the hot pink, uh, naturally. And I don't know, is this, does anybody know if this is a wire antenna or a PCB antenna? Anybody know? I don't know. Uh, if it, It's possible this is giving a little reduction in range. But... I don't give a damn. I'm so happy with this. And people say, make a video about it. Hang on. So I was going to make a video about it. And then I found this tutorial. Uh, let me make sure I've got the right one. Let me make sure I've got the right one. Yeah. I found this tutorial from Sei FPV. And I was like, this dude already made the better tutorial than I would make. So rather than just follow this guy's tutorial, then make my own version of basically his video, adding nothing to it except my <laughs> beautiful face and shining personality, and then publish it and get all the views. And then he'd be like, Birdwell stole my video. Or maybe he wouldn't. Maybe he'd never know. I thought uh, it's just I should just refer people to his video. So this is it. Say ye FPV, S-E-I-I FPV, Radio Master Boxer Folding Antenna Mod. And if you want to do that mod, which I'm I love it, this that's what I would use. He's you know, you download this 3D print. Does he have links to the prints? Where are the prints? Yeah, here we go. Here's the swivel adapter. Right, printables.com. Yeah, that's the exact one I used. And uh, just follow his guide. It's great. And uh, I'm not gonna just, I'm not gonna just steal somebody else's content, clone it with my own voice, publish it, and take advantage of the fact that I have a bigger audience. To, you know, I was just like, that's not the right thing to do. 
So uh, there you go. These days, the creators just watch the other video on stream. Yeah, and this then is. Post that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bardwell reacts to Say Ye Builds Radio Master Boxer Folding Antenna Mod. Then I just publish it to my channel. I just sit there like this and drink a soda. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, no, he's right. And I just do that for 15 minutes, republish it. Boom! One ad every two minutes. And I just, I'd get, I'd get 20,000 views and he'd get 2,000 views and... And I'd claim that I was I was transformative in, in nature. No, I'm not going to do that. <coughs> anyway, highly recommend if you have a boxer. Okay. The tr here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. I can plug this all day long, and he's not going to get twenty thousand views on that video. As good as that video is, that's just not how YouTube works. And so there is an argument that the, the creators who are doing the reacts, you know, when Asmongold releases a video and it gets 10 million views and the original creator, the, the original creator's video had been up for six months and had 10,000 views, that video was never going to get 10 million views no matter what. So did Asmongold really steal from him? I think it's an interesting question without a necessarily clear answer. I, 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 and I think that when there's a chance that someone who is powerful and famous is taking advantage of someone who is less powerful and famous, then we should default to fuck the powerful and famous guy. He's a dick. And we should protect the less powerful people. But I do think there's an interesting question, and it's not a, as clear-cut as people, as people like to think it is.